Okay. Can you hear me? I should have brought the mic in. That way I can tell if this thing is working. But, uh, you know, I got some questions about, as you can see, I do answer everything. I'm answering a question about this guy that's asking about my last Paul. I should just tell you and say, hey, this is the question. It's in a video. I get asked about this all the time. When I bought two Les Pauls, uh, they were both, you know, white, like Randy's. I have no picture anywhere that I can show you, but, you know, the kind like Randy had. Go to the side here, see if we can see all of these. See, when I look at YouTube, all I see is a bunch of pictures of my videos with a couple of kiss ones. And, you know, Epiphone and all that crap. That's Phil McKnight, though. I, I watch all his stuff. He's very interesting. There. So, Randy's 74 white custom. So, I went in. See, here's guitars 5150. Could be a setup. I don't know. Wow. Nice RR Les Paul. How much that cost you? Such a small, simple question, but not a small, simple answer, because I ended up buying two Les Pauls like that, a Gibson and an Epiphone. The Epiphone was superior. I had all the Gibson, the pickups from the Gibson taken out, put in the Epiphone, and the Epiphone cleaned up, looked nice. I play that all the time. I put a Gibson sticker on it, so it's my... Randy Rhodes Les Paul relic or replica because it's an Epiphone but it's a replica of a Gibson and an Epiphone is a Gibson and that Epiphone actually said Gibson until I changed the uh, truss because on the truss rod it said by Gibson or Gibson I took it out and put a you know it's a great it, it blows away at any uh, Bernie, Orville, Gibson, Les Paul that you'll see. Even though I know a guy that has one for sale for $2,000 in Utah. So anyways, this one is a 1980. It was exactly the same. White, but the neck was all jacked up. He said this one's going to take a while because i got to redo the whole neck. I go, well, if you got to redo the whole neck, i got an idea. Why don't we do, because uh, I saw a guy that had done a star guitar with dots. I said, let's do this and dots. Take your time. And the thing is, is, you know, Randy Rhodes dots. Like on that guitar, not right. On most guitars, not right. The ones on his Sandoval were three and a quarter inch. Those aren't three and a quarter inch. The ones on the Jackson V those are an inch so you, there's these little things and you're like why does that look wrong right? but to me that looked right that's just a little smaller than a three quarter it's not a half that's, that'd be way too small but it looks right on the Les Paul because Les Paul is a smaller body so we have two Seymour Duncans got all brass and I got custom knobs and mainly uh, the one down here for my main volume. And he redid the whole neck. And it's all beautiful now. And it plays nice. And it sounds great. But the thing is, I paid $200 for both of them. And it was 150 for this. Because it was a Gibson. And 50 for the Epiphone. From a pawn shop. And I'm not telling anybody which one. So that's the story behind that. Now I gotta write it on there, but whatever. So, anyways, on another video I did, I have just <laughs> uploaded a video of uh, me after I put, gosh, bless. Um, my uh, pickup and my star, my star guitar, which is 37 years old. Oh, there's Phil McKnight. That's not the guy I want to talk to or want to look about. 
Oh, for crap's sakes.